Pick.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies you shouldn't watch alone. What did you say? I said you're not my mother! I am your mother! For this list, we're highlighting frightening horror movies and a few films from other genres that are simply too disturbing to watch by yourself. Number 10, The Strangers. There are few things more terrifying than masked intruders, because they usually arrive with some type of sharp object, and they always mean business. Is Tamara here? No. No, you're at the wrong house. You sure? In this horror flick, Scott Speedman and Liv Tyler star as two lovers on the road to a romantic getaway in Brian Bertino's film. But things get ugly after a failed proposal. Oh, and when strangers appear with masks on their heads. <laughs> Creepy sounds, cryptic messages, and a trio of psychos ready to slice and dice the surprised couple are just a few of the elements that make this a terrifying rental choice. <sighs> just try watching it alone. You'll spend more time watching the window. Why are you doing this to us? Because you were home. Number nine, The Conjuring. A very powerful demonic has latched itself onto her. You know that you probably picked the wrong home to move into when your dog mysteriously dies during your first few days and spirits begin to express a desire to, um, end you. Well, we've been called demonologists. It's one name for us. Ghost hunters, paranormal researchers. Kooks. <laughs> Such was the case in The Conjuring, where Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga star as real-life ghost investigators attempting to stop an entity from committing bloody murder. We are beyond terrified. We don't know what's going on or what to do. Can you help us? Yes, we can. You know the drill. Exorcisms, horrible screams, slow insanity. Judy? Oh, God! Judy! But James Wan's film offered much more than the usual genre shenanigans. It made people paranoid and afraid of being slaughtered by a smiley yet torn-up doll named Annabelle. Number eight, paranormal activity. So, so this, um, let's call it a haunting, has happened to you before moving into this house? Yes. This found footage flick made audiences wet their pants and blame loved ones for spilling soda in the theater. It seems to me that that's what we're dealing with, something that's basically connected to you. When Katie and Mika move into a new San Diego pad, a collection of odd events inspire them to set up cameras. You stop following me with the camera! But I'm trying to solve the problem here. I didn't bring that thing to the house. Don't do me, you did. Well, Katie stares at her sleeping husband for two hours and later gets pulled out of the room. make matters worse, the demon gets all kinky and starts biting poor Katie. Science looks like something bit you. What happens next will shock you, and it does involve blood. What are you talking about? I don't know. I feel it. I feel it breathing on me. <laughs> Grown men may have acted tough during screenings, but they gently clutched their pillows before going to bed later on. I don't know what the hell's going on, but this is insane. Number seven, Alien. Ash, can you see this? Yes, I can. Aliens aren't real, right? Right? That was the question posed by terrified moviegoers to their loved ones in 1979. I've never seen anything like it. Everybody loves a swell sci-fi story, and Ridley Scott's Alien is one of the best. Just a minute, just a minute. While a space crew makes their way home, something odd transpires, meaning a rather motivated alien begins killing people. You thought the laws of science might ruin the day, did you? 
Nope, it was a seven-foot extraterrestrial monster with a thirst for human blood. <laughs> Even though the human race hasn't actually made contact with aliens that we know of, moviegoers still checked under the bed for a beast waiting to destroy them after they finished watching this flick. Well, let's talk about killing it. We know it's using the air shafts. Will you listen to me, Parker? Shut up! Number six, funny games. It's all fun and games until someone starts breaking eggs and kills the family dog. <laughs> In Mikhail Haneke's original 1997 film, a wealthy Austrian family goes on vacation only to be interrupted by two enthusiastic guests. And that's when the shit hits the fan. The intruders challenge the horrified family to a game of life and death. <laughs> and it doesn't go so well for Papa George, young Georgie, and Mama Anna. Do you think it's enough? Or you want a real ending, right? With plausible plot development? Don't you? As you might expect, Annika's 2007 shot-for-shot -shot American remake was equally dark and made people rethink their morning breakfast. Listen, young man, I don't know what kind of game you're playing, but I don't want to be a part of it. Number five, Wreck. A ver, que nadie se mueva de aquí, eh? It all started when little Jennifer hurls all over her mother. <laughs> This real-time Barcelona shot horror hit theaters in 2007 and featured a most unusual night shift for a TV reporter and her cameraman. As a sickness takes hold of the community, another shocking truth is revealed, and well, it's not a good one. Mira. The brutal realism was so terrifying that grown men chose romantic comedies in place of this Spanish nightmare. <laughs> Nobody wants to be snatched up and taken to hell. At least it's not on our bucket list. <laughs> Number four, The Grudge. It seems that the son killed his wife. Based on the 2002 Japanese film Juon, this Sam Raimi produced flick reminded everybody that a horrific death filled with rage or sorrow does not signify the end. Death becomes a part of that place, killing everything it touches. With a non-linear plot, The Grudge chronicles numerous stories of turbulent deaths and the cycle of horror that ensues. <laughs> Sarah Michelle Gellar stars as an American exchange student who comes face to face with the seemingly unfaithful departed. The woman who was murdered in that house three years ago knew this man. He committed suicide the morning after she died. The concept of the grudge is inherently shocking, but the visuals are simply on another level. Watch this movie alone and you will regret it, because you'll accidentally claw up your own couch. The Ring. Four words, Samara and the television. This remake of a 1998 Japanese film left an imprint on all who watched, as the very premise highlighted the horror that comes from watching a mysterious video of Red Rum. Naomi Watts stars as a protective mother who attempts to break the cycle of death by solving a murder case and thus saving everybody from lonely VHS deaths. But I do, and I'm sorry. It won't stop. The Ring was the first of several Japanese adaptations in modern times and was responsible for inspiring lonely moviegoers to call their best friends to whisper, Seven into the phone, thus ruining their Friday night plans. Who 
Who watches the ring alone? Hey, you, you gotta... Yeah. Don't do that, Mojoholics. Just don't. Number two, The Blair Witch Project. Ooh, do you believe in ghosts? Have you ever heard of The Blair Witch? As one of the most successful indie films of all time, and a defining film of the found footage genre, The Blair Witch Project was a national mystery upon release. The woods around Halloween time is a creepy enough phenomenon. I don't, think, I don't want to go about... cheesy. I want to really avoid any cheese. After immediately acknowledging the disappearance of three students, the filmmakers spun a dramatic tale of a Maryland witch and a brilliant internet marketing campaign led audiences to believe the film was a genuine documentary. The frightening ending has since become iconic and made us believe that anything is possible when it comes to the supernatural. I love you, Mom. Dad. I'm so sorry. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Here's Johnny. Exorcist. Tell me if you feel a vibration. It's the ultimate horror film that has it all. You're gonna die up there. Accomplished director? Yep. Legendary actor? Yep. Absolutely terrifying imagery? Um, does a spinning demon-possessed head qualify? 